Today I'm going to show you how to do a double exposure effect in Photoshop. Although it's popular today on Photoshop, the double exposure technique is actually a very old school trick. By old school, I'm talking before digital cameras with film. Photographers would take two pictures on the same piece of film, mixing the two images to get a really cool effect. Fortunately, these days, it's really easy to do. So let's get started. Here we are in Photoshop, and we're gonna start by looking at a couple of examples of the double exposure technique. Like I said, it comes from overlaying two images with each other. And in Photoshop, what we like to do is have a stark white background, or at least a very light one, to get the maximum amount of contrast between the two images. Here's one where I pulled a random portrait picture off the internet as well as a random landscape and I think it's got a really nice effect. The way that the horizon is aligned with his eyes gives it a really strong sense that he's staring at this. And then we've got these beautiful colours up the top that come in his hair and then our details down the bottom that come here. It's a completely different type of example. This one I would consider unfinished because I'd like to arrange them a lot better on the page but it's actually six examples on the same page in one. If we zoom in, we can see we have a range of animals and all of them are arranged so the double exposure is between them and their habitat. On this one, I've gone for a bit of a softer finish, so it's a little bit different to the other ones you'll see in this video. This is one I would consider not quite as successful because it's got a lot of dark areas. I think they work best like in this first one when you've got a lighter color. So it contrasts from the white, but not really starkly. You want a kind of soft and airy feel to the thing. Here's one with Hugh Jackman overlaid with Wolverine. With this type of style, you could keep it to the effect that this is his alter ego and show that Wolverine is inside him. I've included this one just to show that it doesn't have to be only realistic pictures. In this one, we've got a comic book style and you could have a drawn style or paint or anything else that you like. Finally, we have one of Emma Watson. She is, of course, iconic for her role in the Harry Potter movies early in her career. So I've overlaid Hogwarts here with a nice night skyline. This is perhaps my favorite one, so this is the one we're gonna to choose to recreate for this tutorial. Switching over now to Google Image Search, we'll show you the picture that I chose. First thing you need to do when you're searching is make sure it's set to large, and if you're going for a really high quality, maybe you'll go to larger than and set in something truly enormous. Other thing you're looking for is a really stark or plain colored background. Ideally in Photoshop, you'd have something with a plain white or plain black background and you'd be able to use the magic wand tool to click and delete the background very, very quickly. Unfortunately here, this one, which is the one I chose, didn't have that. But the reason I chose it is because it was really dramatic the way she was looking over her shoulder. One like this I think would work really well because it's got the black background and there's a lot of shadow on her face. This one, not so much. I think the red would be a little bit too strong and contrast too much. The one I chose is colored, but it's fairly neutral in its color palette. So there's some shadows on the face, there's a dynamic pose, and I think it was perfect for this one. Now the picture of Hogwarts I chose, once again, I have Google set to large. The one I chose of Hogwarts had the buildings and also something happening in the sky. I wanted the clouds and the stars and things like that. So I could put that in the upper portion of the image and create some interest. So here I've pasted in my image into Photoshop. It's quite a big picture. And unfortunately, my first job is to cut out the background. Like I said, if I had picked something with a really plain background, I could probably hit the magic wand, be able to delete all of it in one go. Here it works for most of it, but already it's starting to creep into what I'm trying to retain. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to use a lasso tool or something similar and manually outline it the hard way. To save you the grief of watching me do that, I'm gonna to cut to the version with the background already cut out. So I've finished my selection and here are a few tips to get the best out of yours. Sometimes you want a really stark edge if you've got a really high res photo, but for me, for this one, I'm gonna go for a slightly soft edge. And now that I have my selection, I'm gonna go Shift F6 and that will bring up the feather. I'm gonna do a feather radius pretty small. I want this subtle of about two. And then I can go Control Shift I, which is the same as Select Inverse. And you can see I did have Emma Watson selected, but now I have the background selected and that should put me in the position to press delete on the keyboard and to be able to remove it, deselect and have a pretty clean cutout. You can see if I zoom in here, I've got this slightly soft edge. It's not as harsh as it could have been if I did it without the feather. It looks like there's still a white background, but of course that's going from the background layer. If I turn that off, it reveals the grid to show that it is in fact see-through. 
Next thing we're gonna do is to paste in our second image. And you can see here, it's not quite big enough. And fortunately, you can get away with these with having a slightly smaller one, unless you need it to be super, super crisp. So I'm gonna resize this to be a fair bit bigger, knowing that I can change it later on. And if I lose a little bit of quality, it's really not that big a deal. I'm gonna hide my new layer, just to show you a little trick in Photoshop that you might not know. You hold the control key on Windows or the command key on a Mac and then click on the thumbnail here. It will automatically select all of the pixels on that layer. I can now switch back to my top layer and come down and hit this button here. This is the create mask button. So I've made this panel bigger so we can see exactly what it does. And that is to apply a mask as if we were masking off with physical paper or masking tape to then spray paint. They can see all of the black areas it's not gonna let any pixels through, and all of the white areas, it's gonna let whatever we have on this image through in those places. And if I try and move the layer around, you can see that the background image and the cutout move together. If I wanna move one rather than the other, I have to click to take off the link, and now I can move the mask around independent of the background picture, and perhaps more importantly, I can then move around the background image and resize it, transform whatever I wanna do independent of the cutout. But now I'm happy with how it was, so I'm just going to undo a couple of steps till it's back in place. Very important to make sure that you realize whether you're working on the image or the mask. You can see it gets the outline to signify that. So I need to have it on the image and then come to my layer blending mode. And I'm gonna set it from normal to multiply. This is giving us the first versions of what we're after. Now compared to my finished one, you can see that this is a lot lighter and airier so therefore we've still got some work to do. First thing we're gonna do is turn down our opacity on the layer underneath, and it's quite a tricky juggle to get it exactly right. So to help with that, we're gonna make a copy of this layer, and then we're gonna move it on top of the other layer. What we can do now is play with the opacity of the two to control how much contrast and how much is showing through. We can have it fairly subtle on top, but if there's something we want to show through really strongly, we can have that on the layer underneath. We can turn up the opacity a little bit more on that and we can balance the two until we get it how we like it. Now one thing that's particularly good about the finished one is the fact that you can't see any of her hair. It really adds to the effect. So what we need to do on our upper layer is to actually come in with the eraser tool. We'll make sure we have an appropriate size soft edge brush and we're actually going to delete the top of her hair because we want everything besides her face to go directly through to the background. Actually gonna do this on her back as well. And down this side also. Might even take away part of this top strap just to help it blend in a little bit more. But this stage it looks pretty dark on the hair still, but that's not coming from our top image. You can see I've completely deleted it here. That is actually coming from our image underneath. It just happens to be a dark part of the sky. So if we click to unlink, and then make sure we're on the left hand one. We can use the normal move tool and we can move this around and play until we find an area we really like. Be careful not to put any areas of great contrast on top of things like mouths where you won't be able to see them. But apart from that, move it around and have a play until you find something that works best for you. What you can find is you can also resize here. So I think I'd like this to be a little bit bigger and then I can still continue moving and it's gonna be independent. Now what do I do if I want things on the top like the face to be a little bit stronger? Well, fortunately, because I've got this split into two parts, I can simply turn up the opacity and more of those details will start to come through. Now here it's too strong because I've lost all the blue from the face. It's a matter of sliding this down until we get something that looks pretty nice. Now, here's probably not the best example because I've given her a bead. I'm gonna refer back to my original one and see if I can improve this effect a little bit. All right, I've finished tweaking and I've got something I'm happy with. I played with the opacity a little bit more and I played with moving around my background a little bit more. One thing I don't like is the fact that we can see the pattern of her dress here. So I'm gonna come back to my top one, make sure I've got that nice soft eraser brush. And if I want it to still show, but not completely, I can turn down the flow. So my brushing effect is a little bit more subtle. Match this a little bit closer in size. And that looks nicer there. I can just see it through, but mainly I'm getting the building. There's only a couple more steps until we're done. Let's compare back to our original. 
can see here I've got a bit of a shadow on the back. I think that adds a little bit of depth. There's multiple ways we could do that, but I like to do this so I can edit and change my mind later on and I'm not stuck with some pixels permanently colored. So what I could do to achieve this would have a black brush and come to my layer here and paint in the shadow that I'm after. But then the problem is if I then move that layer, the shadow moves with it. So that is very undesirable. I'll undo that. So instead, what I would propose to do is to add a completely new layer. If I do my trick by holding control and clicking on my original one, it's gonna select all of those pixels. That means when I come and paint with black, it's gonna constrain it to those areas. And I can put in my shadow on a separate layer, which means I can play with the opacity. I can do whatever I want and it won't affect it. Deselect, and I think that part is looking pretty done. One final note, in an image where there's so much white and using it for contrast, you need to get the white space right. So you can see back on this one, I've actually expanded the canvas size to have a little bit more white space around the outside and to have this side open. Because she's looking that way, it creates a kind of focal point of the image. So I'll do the same one here. I'm gonna come to image, canvas size, and I'm looking for it to grow from the bottom out. Note the direction of the arrows here. I'm not too worried about the exact numbers here, but I want it to come up a little bit, so I'll try something like 42, hit OK. Whatever your background color is, for me, in this case, it's white, it's gonna add that same color as it expands the canvas. There is another way you can do this that you might find a little bit more hands-on, and that's by coming to crop, and then instead of cropping inwards, we're gonna crop outwards, and we'll get a nice little preview of how it's gonna look. When we hit the tick, once again, our background color will be automatically filled in for us and when we're done we click off it you can see exactly how it's going to look so that wraps it up a fairly straightforward technique that can apply to a lot of different examples take care before you start to try and plan and match the two images it'll make the effect that much better stay tuned for more photoshop and graphic design tutorials thanks for watching and i'll see you next time G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.